Ever wondered how your browser communicates with a website? The secret lies in the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP for short. This protocol defines several methods or verbs that indicate the action to be performed on a given resource. Let's dive right into it. First up, there's the get method. This is like asking for a book in a library. The get method requests data from a specified resource. It's used to retrieve information and should not alter the server's state. It's like fetching a web page or an image. It's safe and adempotent, meaning it doesn't matter how many times you do it, the result remains the same. Next, we have the POST method. Unlike GET, POST sends data to the server to create or update a resource. Think of it as filling out and submitting a form at the post office. The server processes the data, often resulting in a change in the server's state. It's not idempotent, so if you do it multiple times, you might get different outcomes. The PUT method comes next. This method is used to update or create a resource at a specific URL. It's like replacing an old book on the library shelf with a new one. It's idempotent, so no matter how many times you do it, as long as the resource remains unchanged, the result will be the same. The delete method, as the name suggests, is used to request the removal of a specific resource on the server. It's like taking a book off the library shelf and disposing of it. It's also idempotent. If you delete a resource and then attempt to delete it again, the result will be the same as if it were deleted once. The patch method is used to apply partial modifications to a resource. It's like correcting a few pages in a book without changing the entire content. The request includes a set of changes to apply to the resource. This method is not necessarily idempotent. The options method is all about communication. It's used to describe the communication options for the target resource. It's like asking the librarian what books are available in the library. It requests information about the allowed methods, supported content types, and other capabilities of the server for a given resource. Lastly, there's the head method. This is similar to GET, but it only retrieves the headers of the response that would be obtained if a GET request were made. It's like checking the blurb of a book without actually reading it. It's used to obtain metadata about a resource without retrieving the actual resource, often to check for the resource's existence or modification date. These HTTP methods define the actions that can be performed on resources identified by URIs, forming the basis for communication between clients and servers on the web. But remember, like the rules in a library, these methods are there to ensure efficient and effective communication. So, the next time you browse a website, think about the jets, posts and putts happening behind the scenes. It's a whole world of conversation, happening in a language your browser and the server both understand.